Hello everyone. The Burning Legion has invaded Azeroth once again, and Druids are able to pick up four different artifacts to empower them in this war. The Fangs of Ashamane are kept for the strongest feral Druids in the world. We're told that the Fangs are at a great shrine that was built in her honor within Valshira, guarded by the Ashen, so we ride out to see if we can convince them to allow their precious artifact to be used in combat. I told you the shrine isn't safe! Look at what your stubbornness has caused! Now is not the time for this, Verstock. We must tend to our wounded. If the ward protecting the fangs fails, we'll have more to worry about than a few cuts and bruises. I'll guard the weapon, even if you won't. As we fly in, we find out that the Legion is already attacking and the Ashen could use our aid. The Landros doesn't even have time to hear why we came and he asked of us to rescue a few of his followers that are being tormented and also collect a few of Telandu's seeds. These seeds are required to renew the wards protecting the Fangs since they've been active for 10,000 years now and they've been weakened over time. Now the history of Ashamane, similar to Ursak, goes back to the time where Keeper Freya was roaming the world and seeding it with life. She created lush enclaves all across Azeroth that gave rise to countless animals and on occasion, extraordinary creatures captured Freya's attention. One day, she found a wolf pack that had killed a panther and they were trying to finish off her lone surviving cub. Though the wolves had wounded the tiny creature, she still fought fiercely, swiping viciously with her claws at the bigger predators. Freya was astonished to see that before long, the wolves were actually driven away, unwilling to suffer further injuries for their meal. When Freya picked up the cup, the keeper endured a flurry of small scratches for her trouble. They did not anger her. Quite the contrary, delighted by the creature's unrelenting wildness, the keeper healed the cup's injuries and named her Ashamane for the color of her striking black fur. Over the years, Ashamane grew into a massive panther. No wolf pack dared to hunt her now, and yet the panther did not fall to the desire for vengeance. She could have easily stalked and killed every wolf in her valley, but she didn't. Her wild nature made her understand that predators hunt prey. The wolves never had it in for Ashamane. They were simply hungry, and she did not hold it against them. However, she did enjoy toying with them, as she would sneak up on the pack to detect her and wake them from their sleep with an earth-shattering roar, sending them fleeing into the forest. Like Ashamane and Ursok and Ursul, there were more powerful iconic creatures who seemed to live a different existence than the rest of nature, and mortals would soon refer to them as either Loa, demigods, or the most recent term, wild gods. Stories of a giant majestic panther spread amongst the troll culture, and some honored her as one of their Loa, while others craved the glory that would come from bringing down such a magnificent being. Ashamane was delighted by this. No matter how clever they were, no matter how silent they moved or how true their aim was, they all returned to their tribe empty-handed, the sound of her roar still ringing their ears and the sight of her fangs forever haunting their dreams. She did not take their lives, they understood their place in the wilds when she was done with them, and that was enough. Tide Keeper Freya loved the wild gods, and many of them joined her on her travels as she continued to roam the land, but Eshemane was unwilling to tie herself down to Freya's will. She observed them from afar, and Freya understood, smiling when she saw Eshemane's glowing eyes, yet no matter what Eshemane fought for herself, there would always be a connection between her and the Keeper. There was another realm, a wild, untouched place called the Emerald Dream, which Freya had used to seed life all across of Azeroth, and thus, the wild gods were bound to it. Eventually, Ashamane came to Mount Hyjal to experience the dream for herself, and she was immediately taken with this thriving vision of an untamed world. The panther made her home on the western slopes of the Well of Eternity, exploring its mysteries and power. For a time, life was sweet, and then the War of the Ancients took place. The Wild Gods answered the call of war, and they fought against the Legion. For Ashamane, her duty was clear. She rushed into battle with the Burning Legion without hesitation. A new predator had come into her world, and she was glad to hunt it. An army of demons was preparing to lay siege to Sudamar, and Ashamane faced it alone. She had never visited the forest near Valshira before, but that didn't matter. They were the Wilds, and thus they were home. She ripped through the demons' ranks and then disappeared back into the trees. She crept along the high branches, dove down upon the Legion commanders. She was a terror, a fearsome beast and she held nothing back, offering no mercy. It was a slaughter, and yet not even a wild god could avoid injuries at the Burning Legion's hands. Scored by Fellfire and poisoned by their tainted weapons, Ashamane fought on, feeling their ranks until the leader was forced to face her himself. That had been her plan all along. It was one of the laws of survival. The pack was not defeated until his leader's throat was between her jaws. 
This is as far as the story goes described within the Tome of the Ancients that you can find in Wowpedia. Now, I'm not sure if that's because nobody was able to get enough research done on the beta to complete the story, or because this is where the story ends and the final battle is not described in full details. We did know that Ashermain fell during the War of the Ancients and most likely by the hands of the Legion's leader. Sargeras never made it onto Azeroth, so I imagine that the leader that they're talking about, that would be Archimond, who was leading the demonic forces. This means that he did not only break Malorn's neck on the battle, field, he also took out Eshemane. It could also be that they're talking about the leader of this demonic invasion force that was ready to invade Sudamar, but I think Archimond taking down Eshemane is just way cooler, so let's go with it. Either way, we're here to collect our claws, and after helping out the Landros, we inform him about what we actually came here to do. If we would have told him this right at the start, he would have told us to get away, but we did help him out, and he's an elf of his word. Well done! Now we can begin our counterattack. By the light of Elune, what happened to the shrine? Verstock was at the shrine. Find out what's going on up there. I'll meet up with you as soon as I can. Your pathetic barriers mean nothing to the Legion! The blades are mine! I'll never let Ashamane's fangs fall to your kind! Take a good look, Brute. You'll never see the fangs again! Insolent mortal! We will hunt you down! You only delay the inevitable! The Pit Lord Elgrimmon nearly got his hands on the claws, but Vedestock jumped in and kept him safe. It's good that he did, but the Landros fears that he's going to get himself killed. So after bringing down Elgrimmon, we jump on Adam Fang and we follow Verstock's smell. Can you hear me through this thing? You should be near Verstock's location by now. My foolish protege was in such a rush to escape the shrine, I'll wager he failed to mask his scent. Shift into cat form and you'll likely detect it. Careful! The ruins are infested by withered. Pitiful creatures with an unending hunger for the arcane. The power of the fangs might have lured some to Verstock's trail. Withered live for nothing but getting their next mana fix, which we can use to our advantage as we shoot some mana towards the door, which causes the wither to be attracted to it and knock it down. I see you. You may look like a druid, but I can tell you're a demon in disguise. I won't fall for your trick. You'll never get the fangs from me. Has Verstock gone mad? Wielding the fangs enhances one's senses, but I'm afraid it also heightened his paranoia. You must get the fangs away from Verstock. The longer they remain in his possession, the greater his delusion becomes. Demon! Be gone! Why won't you just go away? <sighs> you won't leave. Very well. I'll end this chase myself! <sighs> the fangs are mine! Mine! <sighs> We must make Verstock see reason and take those claws away from him, but he's unwilling to listen and he keeps on running away. No! I'll never submit. What is this? Ah, release me at once! Look what fell into my web. Tonight, I shall feast! What on Azeroth was that? Be careful. Stick around. It's mere time! What's this? Another intruder approaches! Webmistress Shinaris has taken Verstock captive and is ready to devour him for her next meal. Naturally, we can't let this happen, so after a fierce battle with the Felderai, we bring the spider down and we save Verstock's life. Ah! Uh, freedom! I thought I was going to be spider food. I wanted to protect the fangs, but was soon overwhelmed. You've proven yourself far more capable as their protector. Please, take them.
And with that, we've proven ourselves worthy of wielding the fangs of Ashamain into battle. The spirit of the panther that was unwilling to give up even when the odds were stacked against her. Unwilling to surrender even in the face of the Legion's leader. Her legacy now empowers the Fettle Druids as they go on their adventures within the Broken Isles. However, those adventures are a story for another day. So for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!